Yes. Diagnosis? Yes, 46. Yeah. So yeah. how long has it been? 21 years. I remember just thinking, I hope I'm around to get... It was like Alex through university and Claire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> take every day as it comes and just be thankful for every day you have, although you don't always feel like that. But, you know, when, when you start to uh, analyse things, and you do, <laughs> a lot, I know I did and still do, I think it's then when you have your moments where you think, when you're reflecting that, gosh, I'm lucky, I'm here. I wouldn't be without the NHS, would we? Yeah. My lumpectomy on the 12th of the 12th of the 12th. Yeah. And then I had, I had to have chemo because I was only 39 and because I'd found it in, yeah. the, in the lymph nodes. So, and then a further up to get all them out and, and the radiotherapy and it just took its... I'd been off about nine months, but then I did kind of go back to work a bit early really. And I just, it was the being tired that really knocked me more yeah. than anything. Not right. So this was all in two thousand and thirteen. Yeah. Um, and then in two thousand and fifteen, my friend said, "Do you want to join a running group?" And we ran the London Half Marathon in two thousand and fifteen in the May. We just started running in the January. We did it in two hours twenty <gasps> minutes. Oh we, did, we raised a lot of money for breast cancer. We had like Ruth's face yeah. on the back, and we ran with her cousin and yeah. and his friend. So it was amazing thing to do and after that we I carried on running so I've been oh did you running ever since <laughs> I run every day now yeah do you? yeah I do but it was just that time in 2000 I thought actually I, f I finally feel back to myself now. yeah uh, through running I've made so many loads and loads of new friends and oh that's brilliant do park runs every Saturday and it's just a real good thing to keep fit and I think and deal with like stuff mentally as well. I'd read about it, I'd read <laughs> when all your treatment finishes you, you might get a bit of a lull because of, all of a sudden you've got no hospital appointments, there's people like oh she's alright now yeah. and, and that's kind of what did happen to me because I went back to work straight away so I, I think I'd finished my last radio in like the summer holidays and gone back to work in the September kind of thing. Yeah. And I think I was there a week and I just totally like broke down oh. and stopped crying for about a week. And I, and it was everything I'd read about that I didn't think would happen to me. And I just thought, it, it's just that build up of being strong and keep going and keep going. And then all of a sudden you hit a brick wall and, and I've got my confidence back and I feel good about myself now, which took, I didn't for a long time, yeah. so. Six. Yeah, um, I donated, I chopped all my hair off. Oh, that was a gorgeous picture. Yeah. Oh, it was I really long, your hair. Yeah, it was about here. Yeah. Um, but I've got such thick hair. Um, and I just thought, I'm not, I'm not wasting it. I'm not, I'm not going to lose it to cancer. I'm, I'm losing it to me. So yeah, I was, I was very proud. I was quite chuffed. It was, it was brutal, yeah. Yeah. Um, being back at work, the fatigue, the brain fog, you know, it, I just, I couldn't function as an adult, let alone as a nurse. So yeah, that was really tough. But face of breast cancer last year? One of, One yeah. Of there were, I think there was 12 of us. Do that, I can't do that. But it's not until you have to that you realise what you are capable of. You, you can do that. You can. That's my part, the fact 
found my breast lump. We were in bed one day, yeah. like you know, you spoon each other, and I, he just like sort of cuddled me like that, and he went, "Oh, what's that?" But you know, like yeah. nothing in my family. I'm a massive family of girls as well, and like my mum's got loads of sisters, and just it was just like something out of the blue. He said 99% it's cancer and it was just like the world, like it was just like everything was just crashing down around me. I was like, thought, oh God, I'm going to faint, I'm going to die, I'm going to faint, I was going to be sick. I was like, oh my God, my partner was like trying to keep it together, asking questions, trying to take in the information because I was just like, it's no spread and it is grade one, stage one and you, you know, and I was like, it was like I won the lottery, you know, like even though I'd had cancer, but I was like, I felt like I'd won the lot. Yeah. I felt like, right, you know, that yeah. gave me that bit of strength. And then my mum died, but, you know, it's just, it was just, it was going to happen anyway, but... Yeah. Did you, um, were you able to talk to your mum about it? No, because she had Alzheimer's, she didn't just, know. Yeah, yeah that's what upsets fair. me the most, actually, because she never ever knew. Yeah. Yeah. But it's made me a better person. Yeah? Yeah. How, it's made that? me, um, I don't know, a bit more... I'm very grateful for what I've got. This is, so this has been my fourth year, mm. and this is probably my best year. But then mum's quite extensive, wasn't it? And obviously the others, obviously I've no reason out and all that as well, which didn't help. And then for me, obviously, as you know, it was a fallout afterwards when I just suddenly thought, what on earth has gone on here? You, you have, I had all these boxes, didn't I? Chemo, um, septomy, radiotherapy, ovaries removed, that's it, I'm done, that's my year over. I didn't think once how it was going to affect her mentally, so, so that's what was my struggle. Oh no, and you panic, don't you? Yeah. I remember sitting about four or five days after my last chemo, just crying. And Mark was like, why are you crying? Chemo's over. And I said, because I'm scared. Because while I was having chemo, I knew it was killing the cancer. Because obviously I had my chemo before my mastectomy, didn't I? Did you have that? No, I didn't. So I knew it was killing the cancer. And I knew because it was because it was my lymph nodes that it was, if it spread, then it was killing it. So that was like my sit. So the minute I finished chemo, I could have cried. You haven't, you've not just got cancer, you're a mum with cancer. Oh yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> this is the thing I hate. Hot flushes, let us all thank you. For me, it was like, I'm going to grow my hair because I can. Yeah, that's what it is, I think, yeah. isn't it? And like, I'm growing my hair, but now it's just too long. And I also said I'd never mourn about having a bad hair. Day. <laughs> you do, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, as a women, it takes away from yeah. you. And that's what I don't think people understand. No. I say living for a year with that one boob. Oh, I hated it. Yeah. I would have rather than taking both off at the same time because then it would have been more even rather than that one year of... <laughs> Crazily, I got promotion in the middle of COVID. <laughs> As you were. That's it. Mm. It's fine. You just you just do it. Yeah. Like they told me I would go to bed when I changed my chemo, and I was like, oh no, I won't like. And I didn't. Like that weekend, I was like, I am not laying in that bed. I am getting That's up, even if I'm feeling. Because you had to, I had to take my injections with me. So she was like, you just went straight up to the reception. Right, like, excuse me, have you got a fridge? There's not one in my bedroom, but um, have you got a fridge? And they were like, yeah. I was like, could you put that bag in, please? And they're like, what is it? And I was like, it's chemotherapy drugs. And they were like, oh, oh, right, 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 okay. And I was just like, it's just one of those things, you know, put it in your fridge, I'll come and get it when I need it. To me, to the girls, 
was on weekend and I put my wig on and then I forgot I had a wig on and I went to brush it <laughs> like that, right? So it slipped completely back. I've got a picture on my phone. So my hair starts there where the girls were in stitches like laughing because I just looked like I had this massive forehead. <laughs> and then I can't find my boob. I've got a David. Have you seen my boob? And he's like, no. And I was like, I don't know where it is. And I was going to like a ball on the night, like all dressed up lovely and I couldn't find my bloody boob. I was like, oh my God, where is it? I just had this vision, I'd left it in the bra <laughs> that I took back to Marks and Spencer's. So I was like, oh my god, it's in the bra that I've returned. <laughs> She um every time. Oh!